it's probably safe to say that every bass angler at some point in time has used a green pumpkin lure. But where did this color come from? I love talking about the history of our great sport, going back to those early entrepreneurs that started the companies that are a mainstay of our business today. Well, you know what? This particular color has an interesting history and I'd like to share it with you. Well, first of all, who came up with this color? Well, it was the founder of Zoom Bait Company, Ed Chambers. He started Zoom in 1977. And of course, it's one of the biggest companies in the industry today. But this particular color, Green Pumpkin, was one of those happy accidents very similar to the potato chip. In the mid to late 1980s, the two most popular colors in the bass fishing world were watermelon and pumpkin. And most lure manufacturers were cranking out tens of thousands of lures annually in these two colors. Well, the part of this story that is the happy accident goes to the injection molding process. And if you're not familiar with how soft plastic lures are made, this is a critical component to the green pumpkin story. During the injection molding process, molten plastic is put into a big tub or a vat, and it is then injected into molds that creates the shape of the lures that we know and love. And then when that molten plastic or that liquid plastic cools down, the lures are taken out of the mold, trimmed, packaged, sold, that type of stuff. Well, during this time period in the mid 80s to late 80s, you really could only inject one color. They didn't have all the, the laminate processes and the pour overs and stuff that they have today. So you really created one color. So in this injection molding process, a manufacturer would put one color in. Let's say they put in, you know, black. They wanted some black lures and they would make all these lures and they finished up that run. And then maybe the next lures that they wanted to make were white. So they would pour into this big vat, this liquid plastic or molten plastic, and then they would go ahead and proceed with the process. Well, that initial run of lures still had a little bit of the previous color in there. And so if you were using black and then you were making white soft plastics, that first run of lures would have a little bit of the black and a little bit of the white. Well, traditionally, most of the time, this initial run of a new color wasn't any good. So they would set them off to the side and either melt them down later to make all black lures, or they would just completely pitch them and get rid of them. Well, Ed Chambers had just finished making a run of watermelon colored lures, and then he was gonna go on to make some pumpkin lures with that same mold. So he filled up the vat with the pumpkin color and then ran that first set. And when he looked at that initial run, when he pulled it out of the mold, he's like, huh, that actually looks pretty good. That's an interesting color. Well, instead of throwing it away or setting it off in the corner of his factory or warehouse, he decided to take them out and fish with them. And the bass absolutely loved them. So he knew he was onto something and he decided to call this new color green pumpkin literally what it was he had watermelon which was a shade of green and he had pumpkin put them together green pumpkin was born and it's safe to say that every soft lure manufacturer in the country today has green pumpkin within their lineup and for most manufacturers this one color right here accounts for a very large percentage of their overall sales. So I'm so glad that there was this little accident back in the mid 80s and bass anglers now can reap the benefits of probably or arguably one of the best bass colors out there on the market. And speaking of colors, if you would like to watch a video on matching the forage and kind of what bass see underwater, go ahead and check this one out right here. I think that you will find it interesting. And hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.